Yeah, we will start. We will take up next numerical for analysis of trust. In this numerical, you are again supposed to determine the force in each member uh, of the trust structure as shown in figure. Over here, so these are the members, and such kind of structures are there, they exist. Uh, I, I hope you people must have observed the transmission towers. Okay, typical transmission towers they uh, resemble to such kind of. Uh, model or uh, structure you can consider. Okay. Over here, the supports are given as one hinged and one roller, like this. There are few loadings, rather only one load, which is capital P, which is exactly at the center of this structure. So if I draw the center line, it is like this. And the notations, like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. Okay. Angle, information related to angle. This is 60 degree. This is 30, this is 30 degree. Okay. So you are supposed to analyze uh, this truss and you must have observed that we have started with simple truss wherein uh, the number of members were few. Also the structure was a uh, single triangular type of structure. It was not that much elevated as what we, we are uh, observing over here. You can see the triangular part, it is above this arrangement, isn't it? So over here, what do you observe? More number of members are available. The structure is complex and being more, uh, and the structure having a more number of members. So our calculation will also increase. Calculation efforts, those will increase. So, but uh, as we have discussed few things uh, based on our discussion, if you remember that if there are, you know, collinear members and if third member is getting attached to that collinear member, for example, like this, if this third member is attached to these collinear members, for example, A, B, C, and this is D, right, then if there is no force at this point of the intersection of two collinear members, the force in the third member shall be zero. So with respect to this understanding, if we are able to identify such type of situation in this numerical, and if we, if we, if we are in a position uh, to eliminate most of the unknown parameters, okay? if it is possible, then we can do that. So uh, can you observe any such condition in this complete numerical? I did. Which one? Which one? Which one? B, C, D, and going to F and E. Okay, but see what is happening. What happens over here at C point or at joint C? At this joint C, what happens? Instead of one 
member you can see there are two members isn't it so this won't be applicable for member bc and cd although they are collinear but you can see there are two members which are getting connected at joint c any other thing yes from this point exactly so i can say that ee and ef these are collinear members and ce is the third member which is getting connected so over here what i can say that member ce will carry zero force if ce carries zero force that means there is no such member uh, which is attached at point c virtually isn't it so what what do you think what should be the value of force in member c here if i consider bc and cd to be collinear in that case again this member will have zero force are you getting me yes sir okay so out of so many uh, members what we have done we have eliminated or we have found out the force in members ce and cf now this the uh, further calculation calculation becomes easy okay So we have identified uh, two member forces. Uh, do we have some other information? Support. Support. Okay, support reaction. So fine. Are you? Do not hear roller. Did I make? Sorry, this is him. This is him. So in this case, two forces, and in over here, there will be one force. Okay. let me call it as mm, r a horizontal r a vertical and let me consider this to be r g acha apart from this do you observe such, such situation anywhere else so b h g yes correct so this joint h if i consider joint h what do you observe section h this is h this is b a f okay so i i will consider these to be collinear for instance this is the third member okay but at this joint you will find this member is getting attached isn't it right so if in in such case where there is bit confusion it is very much recommended that what uh, uh, we can uh, do is we can solve each and every joint or we can go with the step by step process of solving with the help of method of joint so let us try to identify and whether we will see what kind what type of uh, member force do we get over here over here over here and over here let us try to identify theek okay? hai so before solving that we should identify these values it is very simple three unknowns available equations are three make use of equations of equilibrium so first step is to identify support reactions support reactions summation of forces in x direction equal to 0 it is clear rh is 0 rav plus rg is equal to p is this correct summation of force in y direction equal to zero for this condition i have written this equation i hope this is understood okay uh, let let us consider uh, this length to be l by 2 l by 2 let me check what is given in the 
Yes, this is L by 12 by 2. ठीक है? So with reference to this, you calculate summation of moment about let's say point A equal to zero. So R G into L minus P into L by 2 equal to zero, and therefore R G will be equal to P by 2. If R G is P by 2, therefore R A B will be equal to P by 2. Am I right? And both will be positive. ठीक है? Next. Now what you do in order to identify uh, the member force in over here or over here? We are interested in finding out uh, this value. Let us check what is the value for this. So you consider joint A. Again, while identifying uh, the joint, initial joint, what you are supposed to identify that the number of uh, unknown forces should be less, less than three. Okay. So at joint A, this is known reaction force and these are the two members. So you consider this to be initially tension force, you name them FAH force in member A, B. Okay. This will be the resolution. Okay. Achha, I did not give the angle. Sorry. This angle is 45 degree. This is mentioned. This is 45. This is 45. This is given. Okay. So with this information, this angle will be 45 degree. So I will write down the equation. How much is this value? P by Q. Summation of force in that direction equal to 0. FAH cos 45 equal to zero. Do you observe any kind of horizontal force to be acting at anywhere other than this cos component? There is no other value. And therefore, what I can say, Fa is equal to zero. Am I right? Similarly, summation of force in y direction equal to zero. Fab plus Fah sine 45 plus P by 2 equal to 0. And therefore, FAB will be equal to minus P by 2. Or in other terms, this is P by 2 compression. Am I right? So whatever I have assumed for FAB force, it will be compressive force, not the tension force. So is this understood? So just try to understand now. What we have done, we have identified this value, force in member AH. This came out to be zero. Got it? Now you need not to solve uh, for this joint G. With respect to this information, now let me know. You might have understood this thing. BH and HG, they are collinear. And this is the third member which is attached to the point H for these collinear members. This is zero force. This is the third member. So this will be zero. Am I right? Yes. Is this okay? Correct. And if you apply the same joint. Uh, equation at this joint G, you will observe that this will again be 0 and because since this is 0, this will again be 0. You can verify that. You can verify that. Okay. So have you understood this thing? So our, uh, our numerical has uh, cut down to a very small uh, information that has to be found out. The number of members have reduced. So there are only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 members. Okay. So let us let us try to identify the forces in other members. 
So you have considered joint A initially. Go for joint B. Just observe whether the number of uh, unknowns are more or less for joint B. We have already evaluated this force, remember in force AB. We know this is zero. Uh, there are then two unknowns. So you consider joint B. Joint B. And you draw the free body diagram. Since this member is zero, I will not draw this. We had identified uh, the force in this member to be compression, and the uh, magnitude was p by two. Let us consider force in this member to be tension. Over here again tension. So this is force in member BC. Force in member BF. This is 60 degree. So resolve this into components. FBC cos of 60 and FBC sin 60. Summation of force in x direction equal to 0. FBC cos 60 positive plus FBF equal to 0. Summation of forces in y direction equal to 0. So P by 2, P by 2 plus FBC sin 16 equal to 0. So therefore, what should be the value of FBC? Yes. What should be the value of FBC? I'm getting it to be 0 0.577 times P. Please verify. Okay. Or or 0 0.577 p compression. Okay. So is this okay? Please let me know. Similarly, uh, f here will be. I am getting that value to be 0 0.288 times p. And this, this I am getting it to be tension. This is tension force. This is compression. Please verify. Okay. Then after joint B, now you can go for joint C. At joint C, you can see there is now only one unknown that is CD value. Other two values are zero as you can see from here. Okay, So you can draw the free body diagram for joint C. So this is joint C, this is D, this is B and we have already identified force in member BC. Force in member BC came out to be compression F B C. This was uh, 0 0.577 P. Okay. So you can resolve this into components. Similarly, since this is unknown, 
you can resolve this into components. And you know the angle for this is given as 60 degree. Okay. Angle with the horizontal 60 degree. So this is FCD cos 60. FCD sine component. Right. So I will write down the equation associated to this summation of force giving directly equal to zero. F per CD cos 60 plus 0 0.577 times P equal to zero. From here itself, you can get the value for F C D, which will be a negative value. So over here also you will get compression force. Okay. And that value, uh, I'm getting it to be again 0 0.577 times P or plus 0 0.577 times P. This will be concrete. Sir? Yes. Sir, uh, 0 0.577 P or Oh, right. Sorry. Yes. This will be correct. Cos 60. Fine. And that's why cos 60 term will get eliminated. And therefore, this will be the value. Yes, you're right. Take okay. it. So this will be compression value. Then you go for joint D. Right? Joint D, and you draw the free body diagram. Okay. Over here, there is force P. This is CE. Already, we have evaluated this force in member CD, and it is uh, compression in nature. So, this will be the arrow. Let us assume this to be. Tension. Okay. So you can see all everywhere uh, angle is 60 degrees, as you can see over here. So this is with respect to the horizontal. So this angle, this angle, these two angles are 60 degrees. So uh, What will be this angle value? Again, this will be 60. Uh, am I right? This will be FCD. So my direct value will be 0 0.577 P cos 60. And this is F D point. F D E cos 60. So again, you will find from here, if I apply this equation or F y equal to 0, anything. Over here, what I will observe is F d e cos 60 plus 0 0.577 p cos 60 equal to 0. And here, again, this value shall be okay. or plus 0 0.577 P compression. Okay. Then you go, go for the next joint, joint E. Joint D and then joint F. Uh, joint F So instead of going for joint F, you can uh, go for joint G and you will observe that since these two values, they came out to be P by 2, P by 2, this will be same. Don't you feel so? That means force in member AB will be equal to force in member FH, uh, G, G, F. Am I right? 0 0.5 times P or P by 2. Okay. So can you please uh, tell me what will be the value in this member? 
force value in member EF. By that time, I will draw the final figure. You please evaluate force in member EF. Yes. So this came out to be compression e by two. Okay. Uh, this is again compression. By two. <coughs> then everything came out to be as far as this is concerned. This is compression, compression. This is again compression. Uh, can you please tell me what is this value? Uh, so again, it is compression. Okay. Yeah. So this is also compression. This came out to be tension as it was. Only one member was in tension, others were in compression. So 0 0.577 E, 0 0.577 E. This is force P. Okay, rest everything is so a complex numerical was reduced to a very simple form by using that uh, logic, what whatever we had discussed in the earlier lecture. Right? So uh, don't get afraid of big numericals. You see, uh, in case if you find, if you observe such uh, big structures and if you are supposed to analyze or find out the values of forces, in that case, don't get afraid. Just try to make use of, first of all, you need to observe, then try to make use of the information which you have, try to apply that, and then you will find the problem, complex problem becomes really easy. Okay? Next numerical. And remember, once you finish finding out the uh, forces values or member forces, you are supposed to draw this final figure. See, there, there is a purpose of drawing this final figure. This is a sort of summary of whatever you have uh, understood and whatever forces you have found out. This summary is helpful for other people. L let me tell you one thing that after your graduation, most of you will go into some designing forms. In designing forms, what you are supposed to do, you are supposed to present different types of reports design reports in the sense if you are uh, designing some multi-story structures mm -hmm. like this whatever i had shown uh, earlier in the, in the uh, previous numerical in that case uh, you will be finding out so many parameters one such parameter will be the member forces later on you will say that based on this member forces you will be deciding the dimensions of different members okay and therefore, you will find in case of multi-storied uh, building, let's say for a, uh, for example, our college campus and the civil engineering department. So there are uh, two floors in civil engineering department. And this, uh, if you observe that this complete building rests on horizontal beams and vertical columns. And if you have observed, 
the beams have few dimensions um, and the columns they do have dimensions. So these dimensions are decided by the engineers, people like you. Okay. All these dimensions, they are to be presented in the form of a report. And that report is nothing but the summary, whatever we are uh, drawing at the end of the calculation. No one will go through the uh, calculation initially. I mean, if there is some issue, if uh, someone finds some uh, problem related to the calculation part, then and only then that will be referred. Otherwise, your summary chart, that will be seen. Okay. So uh, this is very important. Uh, just finding out the values will not serve our purpose. We are supposed to show the complete summary of the values of whatever you have found out. Okay? So that is the uh, purpose. So next numerical. Determine the force in each member of the truss as shown. Caused by lifting. So there is a twist. Here what it says. Caused by lifting the 120 Newton load at a constant velocity of 8 meter per second. Okay. So I will draw the figure. This is roller support, this is hinge support. This is a vertical member, okay. vertical member, and at this point, with the help of smooth pin connection, there is one wheel, wheel arrangement, or you can say it is a pulley. It is a pulley system. There is one weight which is attached. And this weight has been pulled with the help of this force capital P, whose slope four horizontal, three vertical. This is given. Okay. This weight is uh, 120 Newton. The dimensions are eight meter. This is how much? Eight meter. Okay, and this is six meter. A, B, this is point C, and this is D. So, what what you are supposed to identify force in members of this truss. And thing is, with the help of this force P, which is uh, you know acting at a constant velocity. Constant velocity of 8 meter per second. This information is given. Okay. So, first of all, let me know what is the significance of this statement? Why do you think this statement must have been provided? Kya ho sakta Reason. Yes, anyone. This we will discuss. Yes. Any guess why this statement is given? Constant velocity of 8 meter per second. So for that, we need to revisit the definition of equilibrium. What is the definition of equilibrium? Yes. Yes, anyone? Are you people there? Uh, 
when the resultant of all the process maximum body is used, mm-hmm. then you can say that the body is at that when constant motion that is given. So that's the point. Okay. So the second part that is if the body is uh, moving with a constant velocity, then also we are supposed to consider that uh, rigid body to be in equilibrium, right? So the significance of this statement over here at this point of time is that the complete system is in equilibrium, and because of which we can make use of equations of equilibrium, correct? So now you can start the solution part. So support conditions R A, R D V, R D H. Okay, there is a pulley system which is connected at this point C with the help of smooth pins. So what I will do is first of all I will consider the free body diagram of this pulley. At this point C. you will anticipate there will be two reaction forces like this so assume i am assuming the direction of let's say this to be c horizontal c vertical reaction force okay in addition to this we have this 1200 newton or yeah 120 newton sorry 120 newton load and this is the amount of pull p which has been applied theek hai this is the fbd so can you please tell me what will be the angle value ye yeah, angle value batao mujhe jaldi se Yes, tell me fast. That means you are supposed to identify this angle value. Jaldi bolo. Tan inverse of three by four. And two point eight. Yes, how much? Three six point eight. Three six point eight six. What will be the value for P? It will be 120 newton. Why? Because this friction, uh, because this pulley is frictionless. This is what we are assuming. If if it is not given, unless it is given, you are supposed to consider it to be frictionless. And because of that, P will be equal to 120 newton. If P is 120 newton, I think this value will come out to be 96 newton. You can verify. And this comes out to be seventy-two newton. You can check. Based on this information, since everything is in equilibrium, summation of forces in x direction equal to zero minus C H plus ninety-six equal to zero, and therefore C H is equal to ninety-six newton. And whatever direction I have assumed for C H is okay. Else, it would have been reversed. Then summation of forces in y direction equal to zero. C vertical minus 120 minus 72 equal to zero. So this comes out to be 190. Over here again, it came out to be positive. ठीक है? So my assumed direction for C H and C V, they are okay. Then you are supposed to transfer. Equal and amount, uh, equal and opposite the reaction forces on this truss. Equal and opposite reaction force on the truss. You can draw over here. Okay, over here. You have these values, R A, then R D V, and this is 
let's say RDH. This is a vertical member. Okay. At this point, at this point, since this is okay, since these values are okay and the directions are also fine, so equal and opposite reaction forces shall be mentioned at this location. So CH, this will be CH and this shall be C. Correct? This is 8 meter. This is 8 meter, this is 6 meter. Now it is very simple to identify the force values. Okay. So you please find out these uh, unknown values. These are actually known. These are 196 and uh, 192, I suppose. Yes, it is 192. 192 meter. Okay. You find out first of all the reaction forces and then we calculate the uh, forces in the member. So to proceed, summation of forces in every direction equal to zero. Now over here, you will expect RDH value because CH value is some uh, non-zero value. Therefore, CH, which is acting in the positive direction and minus RDH is equal to zero. Therefore, RDH is 96 Newton, am I right? Okay. What about RA? So in order to uh, identify RA, you are supposed to make use of these two equations. Firstly this, RA minus 192 plus RDB equal to zero. Summation of moment about let's say point B equal to 0. So RA into 16 which is clockwise minus 192 into 8. I am using this minus term because it is moving in the anti-clockwise direction. Okay. So 192 into 8. Anything else? Equal to 0 and therefore RA will come out to be, how much will be the value? 96, 96, 96 Newton. Whatever it? Okay. So once you have identified the values, the reaction values, now you go for the method of joints. You consider joint A. This is joint A. Draw the free body diagram. Joint A as BD. This is the case. RA came out to be 96 Newton, which was, which was positive value. Therefore, the arrow is upwards. Okay. Then we will assume this thing. This angle, again it will be 6 by 8, tan inverse of 6 by 8 or 3 by 4. So it will be again 36.86. Resolve this. Force in member AB cos 36.86. And this is sine component. This is force in member AC. FAB cos of 36.86 plus FAC equal to 0. From here, you won't get anything. Make use of summation of force in y direction equal to 0. 96 plus F A P sine 36.86 equal to 0. Therefore, F A B will be minus value. I am getting that F A B value to be 160 Newton. Since it is, it is negative, that means, or I can write 160 Newton compression. So, this 
AB force will be compression 160 Newton. Similarly, FAB, uh, sorry, FAC, FAC shall be, just substitute that value uh, over there, FAC will come out to be 128 Newton. And this is tension force. Okay. So this is 128. Right? So likewise, uh, you find out other values. I hope this is understood. Okay. So I will stop over here. You people can leave. Thank you.